Hi there. I hope you're enjoying the exhibition. I'm Chris Chapman. I'm the senior curator here at the National Portrait Gallery, and I was also a judge of this year's National Photographic Portrait Prize. You're about to see a video of two of the other judges, my colleagues, Dr. Sarah Engeldow, the gallery's curator and historian, and our guest judge for this year, professional photographer Greg Waite, talking about their experience of the selection process. We're now in our seventh year of presenting this exhibition, and each year we have a different panel of judges, experts in photography and portraiture, and the outcome is always different. To be a finalist in a competition as important as this mm. is to be a winner. If every one of these finalists can take a bow to the fact that they have made this final group of selected images, they should be very proud because they uh, stand amongst good company in terms of the quality of the images mm. overall. Now to see them in the flesh is even more outstanding because um, you just don't know. Well, it is, it's a gamble, isn't it? Because you're placing so much trust in the photographer to, to frame it appropriately and to put the right colour you know, mat board on and, and to make the photograph the right size. And I think there are a couple of cases here when we, where we thought that, uh, that, that some things would have been better bigger or smaller or framed in a slightly different way. But mostly, um, they're very impressive objects in themselves, aren't they? The That's right. And, and entries. it's um, interesting that you use the word objects to describe them because uh, in the end, you are looking at an object. Mm. You're looking at uh, a photograph that has been presented as an art piece. Mm. It's a wrenching process going around and saying, well, you know, this just doesn't quite look right or, you know, this could have been better. Or I, I just feel so personally uh, involved with, not that I am personally involved with the photographers, but, you know, you think about the, the love and the care and the, the investment that's got, in, got into it. And all of these works are really good. Um, and it's it's and it comes down to consensus, doesn't it, on what we what we can all agree on would would be an appropriate winner. It's not necessarily the winner isn't necessarily the first choice of everyone. We're selecting individual works from that 1,400 entries, but we're also curating and putting together an exhibition, an exhibition that mm. says something in itself. Yeah, as a group of works. That brings out the the crisis that uh, judges are. Uh, faced with because there are times when certain works that deserve to make the shortlist don't get in mm. Mm. simply because it's like having a uh, square peg in a round hole mm. or something mm. and, it, and, and they will not sit with the yeah. overall exhibition. Yeah. Well that's right, if we end up with 10 really good photographs of uh, uh, 13 year old girls, we're yeah. not going to put all of them in the show. That's you know, true, that's it's, right. It's, got a, it's a narrowing process even yeah. to get this far. But then, you know, an hour ago, we were standing in front of five or six works that we, were, least, yeah. that we were wrangling over. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we were even arguing about how many highly commended we could possibly have. That's true. <laughs> and there comes to uh, we, we ended up deciding that we could only have one highly commended. I suggested one highly commended and one commended, and then one faintly. <laughs> it was interesting that the two we finished with were, uh, they're quite bleak. We may all have different opinions as to why a smiling photograph doesn't add up to a, 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 an award-winning portrait. My personal feeling about that is that a smile is a fleeting moment and, it's a, a, and, and, and it can't circumscribe um, a personality. Mm. But here, uh, in, in the case of the winner, um, we don't know what, whether that man is looking at something, whether he's, he, I think you said he's, he's looking inward and outward at the same time and I think that's a very good way to describe the indeterminacy and the, and the the fascinating appeal of this picture. He could be looking down at, at somebody very he's very close to uh, dying. He could be trying to find that key to some idea that he is 
so far found extremely mm. elusive. Mm. He could be concerned about his son, mm. he could be concerned about his relationship, he could be concerned about the world, he could be mm. concerned about whether he's going to keep his job or not. Mm. You know? So mm. that's what I find compelling about that portrait. So there's a, there's a kind of sinister playfulness about the highly commended work. There's uh, <laughs> certainly an ambiguity about the picture that uh, makes one wonder about the mental stability of the subject because he's in a very depressed situation but there's also a sense of I can get through this mm. in mm. his eyes. It's, it's a self-portrait and he, uh, he is controlling the situation because unless we're mistaken that, that does appear to be a remote uh, device in his hand for taking the picture. Yeah. It's as if you've walked into his kitchen and you've seen this guy staring into his, into his oven with his smoke in his mouth between his lips, kind of wryly twisted. Uh, but actually, he is photographing himself, so he's not about to put his head in that oven. I don't think artists themselves are even conscious of how many different interpretations mm. an artwork can have. Mm. When you look around the room, there are so many that came close. Two of my favourite works uh, were the biggest and the smallest in the exhibition and the smallest uh, made it made it through to the last three. That beautiful little tin type. Beautiful little tin type yep. uh, of the boy called Daniel. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it's this big, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I think um, I've, in most circumstances, um, very rarely seen photographs improve if they've been made bigger yeah. and um, I think there is a sort of mean target area for photography and it can be as small as a tin type, probably up to about a metre. Do you, what do you think about that? Uh, I, uh, I, I like the big image but then um, in, in, this, in this instance uh, it's a, it's a portrait of modest dimensions that yes. has, uh, has carried off the prize. But I think it's important to say it could have been the teeny tiny one. It could have been. Yeah. It, it could uh, have been. It, which was so beautiful in its own way. It's a gorgeous little work and, and, the, and not to be missed and, mm. and to be mm. cherished. Mm. Um, and, and that, I, I am afraid of that. I'm afraid of people going around the gallery and not looking properly at things. I want to yeah. follow people around and say, no, wait, you haven't looked properly. Yeah, I you reckon definitely up. if you've made the effort to come to the exhibition, yeah. spend a fair bit of time in front of each image and give yourself two looks at it. Go around twice or three times yeah. because you won't be disappointed and you'll find that more is revealed each time. Mm. Um, and in many cases if you read about the, the photograph yeah, too, yeah. it will completely alter your perception of what you're looking at.